When you're baking in the summer, you want to keep things simple. And this lemon tart not only packs intense lemon flavor, but it's also one of the easiest tarts you could ever make. And the key? Well, it's extra virgin olive oil. See, most lemon tart recipes feature butter in both the crust and the filling. But today we're going to be using extra virgin olive oil instead. So let's get started. First, we're going to start with the crust. And I already went ahead and adjusted an oven rack to the middle position, and then I heated the oven to 350 degrees. And we're going to start with our dry ingredients. So here I have one and a half cups of all purpose flour. Here I have five tablespoons of just regular white granulated sugar and a half a teaspoon of salt. And I'm just going to whisk this together until combined. And then we're going to move on to the wet ingredients here. So I have a half a cup of that extra virgin olive oil. And you want to be sure to use a high quality extra virgin olive oil throughout this entire recipe, just as a quick note. And two tablespoons of water. I'm going to switch to a rubber spatula here. You could use a wooden spoon if you want. And just give it a stir until a uniform dough has formed. All right, so you may be wondering when you are at this step why it doesn't look like a normal pie dough. But let me assure you that everything is fine. If you see crumbly bits, you're doing it correctly. So keep proceeding with the recipe. Now, it's time to move on to the most hands-on part of the recipe. And technically, it's the most difficult, but honestly, it's not difficult at all. So using your hands, you want to crumble about three quarters of the dough over the bottom of a nine inch tart pan and make sure that it has a removable bottom. It will save your life later on when you're about to slice this up. Now distributing the dough like this means you won't run out of dough before the edge is complete. All right, so just another quick note. We haven't used any special equipment. We haven't used a stand mixer or a food processor, and that's because we are using the oil, which as opposed to cold butter, doesn't need to be pulsed into the dry ingredients. All right, so as you can see, I'm pressing this dough into an even thickness on the bottom of the pan so that the tart is completely even throughout. There's nothing worse than going through all this work and you have one piece that has a thick, thick crust and another piece that's very, very scant. Now I'm going to crumble the remaining dough and scatter it evenly around the edge of the pan. And this is going to be the side crust. It's just a genius way of making a tart dough. It's so easy and it comes together rather quickly. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm just taking my knuckles and my fingertips and I'm not aggressively, but I'm definitely pressing it much firmer than I would if it was a tart dough with the butter. So it's a lot more forgiving, which for me is a lot more fun to do. All right, so now what I'm doing is I'm still continuing to press with my fingertips and I'm going around the top and pressing down pretty firmly. You also can use a dry one cup measure at this stage too, if that makes life a little easier. You can use just the bottom of the measuring cup, which we do use for pie doughs quite often. But today I'm up for the challenge of using just my fingers. All right, I'm pretty happy with this. So again, we don't need to chill the dough because there isn't butter in this dough. So at this point, we can go directly into the oven. So I'm gonna place this pan on a rim baking sheet that I've set aside right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and bake it until the crust is deep golden brown and firm to the touch, which should take 30 to 35 minutes, being sure to rotate the pan halfway through baking. All right, so now we're gonna turn our attention to the filling, and that is the lemon curd. Now, essentially, lemon curd is a custard-style lemon sauce, and it's made from eggs, butter, and naturally, some lemon juice. And now, just a quick note here, you wanna make sure that throughout this recipe, you're using metal equipment, your saucepan, your strainer, and your whisk that is non-reactive, or else the filling is gonna have a metallic flavor. So about five minutes before your crust is finished baking, you wanna start with this step. Now, with a medium saucepan, you wanna whisk one cup of granulated sugar, two tablespoons of all-purpose flour, and a quarter teaspoon of salt in a medium saucepan, just until combined. And this is off heat at this point. 
So now I'm going to whisk in the eggs. Here we have three large eggs plus three large yolks. And you want to whisk this until no streaks of egg remain. And you might be wondering why we added some flour to this. Now the flour is going to act as a bit of an insurance policy. And it's added to balance the acidity of the lemon and to protect the eggs from curdling as they cook. All right, no streaks of egg remain. It's time to add the lemon part to our lemon curd. Here I have one tablespoon of grated lemon zest plus half a cup of lemon juice. And that comes from about three lemons worth. So for this recipe, we didn't need to use as much lemon juice since we're using olive oil. And that's because the dairy proteins in butter bind to the flavor compounds in lemons, which mutes its flavor in the curd. All right, so we've been off heat this whole time and now it's time to introduce a little bit of heat and to cook our curd. So I'm gonna adjust the heat here to medium low, nice and gradual. You don't wanna be cooking this too aggressively. That's very, very important. And you wanna whisk constantly, being sure to scrape the corners of the saucepan until your mixture thickens slightly and registers 160 degrees, which should take five to eight minutes. Again, I know I said this earlier, but this is the most important step in making the lemon tart. So just be sure not to walk away at this point and keep stirring gently. There's no need to incorporate any kind of air. You're just making sure that the eggs don't gather or plant themselves anywhere in the saucepan because those will create scrambled eggs. So you wanna just make sure that you're moving your whisk throughout the saucepan in this step. All right, we've hit 160 degrees and it's time to take our curd off the heat. So this is a gas burner, so I'm taking it off the heat, especially if you have an electric cooktop at home, you wanna make sure to move the saucepan to a different burner, otherwise you will have a lot of residual heat there, so. But I am gonna be adding our remaining extra virgin olive oil and this is a quarter cup. Whisk that in just until incorporated. All right, this has Thickened nicely. Again, I added the extra virgin olive oil off heat. It sort of slowed down the cooking at this point, but I do need to strain the curd before I grab the tart from the oven. Now this does a few things. Number one, and most importantly, it's gonna strain the solids that haven't been incorporated into this filling. All right, so while this strains, I just wanna make a couple notes of oil versus butter. Now we had wondered if using oil instead of the butter would cause our filling to be runny when we were developing this recipe in the test kitchen. But it turns out the firmness of the curd is caused by a coagulation of the egg proteins. So as the curd cooks, the protein molecules in the eggs unwind into long strands, which tangle to make a mesh that traps the liquid. And the tangling continues as the curd cools, creating a creamy yet firm texture. So I am gonna lift the fine mesh strainer off of the curd here. Again, it's collecting any solids that weren't incorporated into the curd. And that is really important because if you've ever seen a cracked cheesecake or a cracked flourless chocolate cake, that is usually because of overbaking, high temperature in your oven, or these solids that weren't incorporated into the filling. All right, so our curd is looking really good and it's almost time to get it into the oven, but I need my tart shell. So I'm gonna go grab it from the oven and I'll be right back. All right, I'm gonna pour the curd into the warm tart shell and that's for a few different reasons. So this allows the curd to set quickly and evenly and that's gonna prevent overcooking and a soggy crust. All right, but we are gonna go back into the oven right now and I'm gonna bake this tart until the filling is set and barely jiggles when the pan is shaking, which will take eight to 12 minutes. And then I'm gonna let the tart cool completely on a wire rack and that's gonna take at least two hours. All right, so it's been two hours and the lemon tart is officially cool. So we need to move forward and get some slicing so we can get closer to eating. Now with a tart pan like this, as I said earlier, it does have a removable center. You wanna just take the palm of your hand and remove the outer metal ring just by pressing it like so. And then you can either wear a fancy bracelet or put it right back on the cutting board. And then at this point, it's still pretty stuck to the tart pan, not too stuck, not to scare you, but it is um, gonna be on there. So you can take a small offset spatula or a larger one. I happen to have both just in case, but I'm gonna use the smaller one for now. 
and then you go between the tart and between the tart and the pan bottom. Sometimes you just need to finagle it a little bit, but this one came off really nicely, so that's good. I'm just gonna carefully slide the tart onto the cutting board and then remove the center of your tart pan. All right, so now let's go ahead and cut the tart into some wedges. Now, I like to use a boning knife, but you could also use a chef's knife if you prefer. I just feel like the boning knife gives you a little bit more control as the blade is a bit more flexible because it's for larger, tougher cuts of meat or fish. So let's go into the center with the tip of the blade. And you wanna kind of separate it. You can see the tart is so tender, it kind of separated just then. And you can either drag the tip through the tart. And this is where you wanna get a little bit more control by slicing the crust there. Now, in between each slice, I am going to wipe the knife clean and dip it in some warm water. And you're just gonna go down the tart. Do the same thing. And once you get to the crust, carefully slide the blade down. And just a quick note, I don't know if you know this, but it is always best to cut two slices because it removes the tension of the surface area of the tart. So your first slice is always kind of your trial slice, your cook's treat, and your second slice is when things start to look a little bit better. So I removed the second slice because I am going to try the lemon olive oil tart. It's set up really beautifully. I'm gonna take a bite. This is unbelievable. A lot of times with butter, it can be super heavy and a little bit more dense in the tart shell as well as the filling, but because of the olive oil, not only is the crumb super tender, but the filling is absolutely delicious. Beautiful lemon flavor, nice and floral and citrusy, and just a slight olive oil flavor. It's not too overwhelming at all. This is delicious. So thanks to the swap of an unconventional baking ingredient, we were able to reimagine this well-known classic and make it even better and easier.